Hi everyone, welcome to this video where today I'm talking about conditional statements. So a conditional statement is a statement that can be written in if-then form. So it's going to be a statement that's basically a full sentence, if this, blah, 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 then that, blah, blah, blah. That is a conditional statement. If this happens, then that is going to happen for sure. A conditional statement is in the form of P, and then an arrow and then Q. And we read this as if P, then Q. Okay, so if P, then Q. And that's how we read it. So the arrow is always pointing to what is going to happen. The start is always if and then then, where P is the hypothesis. And the hypothesis is generally always after the word if. So if this happens, okay, then it brings you to Q. Q is the conclusion. Q is the conclusion, so it's then this is going to happen next. So if you are count if you are counting in order and you say the number two, then the next number is going to be three. So if this happens, then that will happen. Those are conditional statements. So we're going to be looking at identifying the hypothesis and the conclusion of each one of these statements here. If a polygon has ten sides, then it's a decagon. So the hypothesis is a polygon has 10 sides because that's following the word if, then it's a decagon. It's a decagon would be the conclusion. So if a polygon has 10 sides, that's your hypothesis. It is a decagon. That is your conclusion. Next sentence. Nathan will go to third grade if he successfully completes second grade. Now we want to make sure that we're always looking for if this happens, then that will be the result, right? So What's happening first? Nathan will go to third grade or if he su successfully completes second grade. You should also notice the word if is in the middle of the sentence. So the hypothesis is that Nathan successfully completes the second grade. So if that happens, then he will go on to third grade. The conclusion is that part there. So in the first statement, it was actually in order. But in the second statement now, we should notice the hypothesis and conclusion actually changed spots. Write each statement in if-then form. So if I said a four-sided figure is a quadrilateral and I wanted to put the words if and then and make it a full conditional statement, I would say if a figure has four sides, then it is a quadrilateral. If I wanted to convert this sentence, complementary angles have a sum of 90, and I wanted to put it in if-then form, I would say if angles are complementary, then their measures have a sum of 90. So if it's this, then it's this. Now, there are four different ways we can write specific statements. And I'm just going to move my face over here. So we know this first one, the conditional. Conditional is if P, then Q. But there's three other ways we can twist our P's and Q's. One of them is called the converse. And what I want you to notice is that the converse is if Q, then P. So the order is just completely switched. Okay, The hypothesis and conclusion are swapped. So the conditional is if P, then Q. If I want to reverse the order, I would say if Q, then P. Okay, And we're going to get into a bunch of examples for this. The inverse. The inverse is where I take my original conditional, if P, then Q, but this little squiggly line in front of the P and Q is actually means not. So if not P, so if not P actually means if I'm working with the opposite of P, then that's going to lead me to the opposite of Q. So you'll see that I have both of these not statements. So the inverse looks just like the conditional, except that both are negative. The converse is the conditional flipped. So we have a lot going on here. Converse is the conditional flipped. And then inverse is both of them being negative statements. If not Q, then not, I'm sorry, if not P, then not Q. The contrapositive is like the converse. So they flip and the inverse combined. So they are flipped and both not statements. So if not Q, then not P. 
Now, the reason for all of these different um, ways to write a statement and flip the order or make them not statements or do both is to re be able to understand a conditional statement and understand if I write them in one of these other three forms, is it still a true statement? Does it work with the conditional? So here we're going to work with a few different conditional statements. I can't find a good place for me. I'll go right here. All right, so um, here is the first conditional statement. If P, then Q. If you live in New Jersey, then you live on the East Coast. So if this, then this. Now, that conditional statement is true. If you live in New Jersey, then you live on the East Coast. That is a true statement. The converse would be if I reversed the order. And I said, if you live on the East Coast, then you live in New Jersey. Now think about that. Is the converse of that conditional statement always true? No, it's false. You could be on the East Coast but live in Florida or some other state. The inverse. The inverse brings me back to the conditional but makes both of them not statements. So if I say, if you don't live in New Jersey then you don't live on the East Coast. Is that also always a true statement? If you don't live in New Jersey, then you don't live on the East Coast. That statement's also false because again, you could um, not live in New Jersey, you could live in Florida, but you are living on the East Coast. The contrapositive is now where I take the converse and make those both not statements. So if you don't live on the East Coast, then you don't live in New Jersey. So think about this. If you don't live on the East Coast, then that means you definitely don't live in New Jersey. That is a true statement. So we can take a conditional statement. We can verify whether it's a true statement or a false statement. We can write the converse, so we reverse the hypothesis and conclusion. We can write the inverse, where we make the hypothesis and the conclusion both not statements. Or we could do the contrapositive, which is flip it and make them both negative, and then see what we are left with. Okay, so now let's take a look at if a polygon is a rectangle, then it is a square. If a polygon is a rectangle, then it is a square. So that is a false statement. So this conditional statement, if a polygon is a rectangle, then it is a square. Because we know that a rectangle could be a square, but a rectangle could also have sides that are not all congruent. Um, just opposite, two pairs of opposite sides that are congruent, but they could be, let's say, threes and then fours. Okay, the converse. If I reverse the hypothesis and my conclusion, and I say, if the polygon is a square, then it is a rectangle. Is this statement true or false? This statement is true, because we know that every rectangle is not a square, but every square is a rectangle. If I do the inverse, and so I take the conditional and I make them both not statements, if the polygon is not a rectangle, then it is not a square. If the polygon is not a rectangle, so it doesn't have the properties of a rectangle, opposite sides are congruent, you've got 90 degree angles, you've got four sides, that would also be true. Okay, if the polygon is not a rectangle, then it is not a square. Last one here, contrapositive. So I'm going to take my converse and make them both negative. If the polygon is not a square, then it is not a rectangle. So just because a polygon is not a square, does that mean it can't be a rectangle? That would be false because it could be a rectangle. Okay, two more. If two angles have a sum of 180, then they are supplementary. So that is a true statement. If two angles have a sum of 180, then they are supplementary. So now the converse. The converse is where we flip the order, we flip the hypotenuse and conclusion. So if two angles are supplementary, then they have a sum of 180. Is that true or false? If two angles are supplementary, then they have a sum of 180. That is true. Okay, let's now do our inverse. So we're going to say both of these statements are not true. So if two angles do not have a sum of 180, then they are not supplementary to each other. That is also true. Okay, if you have two angles that have a sum of something else other than 180, then they're not supplementary. 
Then we're going to take this converse statement and we're going to make both of them not statements. So if two angles are not supplementary, then they don't have a sum of 180. And that is also true. So here's an example of a conditional where the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive are all true statements. Okay, last one. If two angles have a sum of 90, then both angles are acute. Okay, that is a true statement. If you have two angles and they add up to 90 degrees, then both angles obviously have to be acute because they both have to be less than 90. Now let's look at the converse. So let me switch my hypothesis and conclusion. So if two angles are acute, then they have a sum of 90. So think about that. If you take any two acute angles, do they have to have a sum of 90? No, that is a false statement because you could have two acute angles of 60 and 60 and they definitely don't add up to 90. Let's do the inverse now. I make both of them negative. So if two angles do not have a sum of 90, okay, so they, two angles add up to anything but 90, then both angles are not acute. That's also not true because I could find two angles that don't have a sum of 90. Um, they could be 40 and 80, and then it says both angles are not acute. Well, no, because 40 and 80 are acute. So if you can find a counterexample, like we learned from our previous lesson, then that would make it a false statement. Last one, the contrapositive. So we're going to take this converse and make them both not statements. If two angles are not acute, then they do not have a sum of 90. So think about that. If you have two angles, and those two angles are not acute angles, then they do not have a sum of 90, that is true. The moment you have one angle that's right, or it's, sub, it's um, excuse me, obtuse, then there's no way those two angles could add up to um, 90 degrees. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.